As many of you know, I bought a house this summer. What you may not know is that I bought a small farm. My little house is perched on top of a hill with woods and fields all around it. And in those fields comes my first experience of caring for goats. We raised sheep when I was younger, and they have their own character and quirkiness, but goats are a different beast, and I am slowly learning what it means to be responsible for raising them with all of its trials and tribulations. You can ask me later, because it's been quite a weekend working with those goats. When I hear this Matthew passage today, it is easy for me to go to stories of goats and sheep. But really, that is just confusing the point that Matthew is making. Sheep and goats may be more comfortable to talk about than the passage that we heard read this morning. Because what I read in this passage was judgment. Restoration or love would be much easier to preach about than judgment. But that's not what we get this week. Judgment. Mm. How do I feel about judgment? Well, it makes me squirm. Some of the strong lines of judgment we heard in the text today make me totally uncomfortable. There is little gray in the passages today, and I'm a person who kind of likes gray. But I do judge all of the time. I want to be on the side of right and good, and I judge others and their actions. And yet, I think about it, and I don't want to be the judge. I'm really glad I don't need to decide what is right and wrong and good in the complexity of our lives today. Which is a good thing, because I don't think as Mennonites we're allowed to be judges. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know about lawyers either. When I read all of Matthew 25, it confuses me. The two parables that precede the story that we heard today make me scratch my head a bit. First, we hear about bridesmaids getting oil or not, and then being excluded from the party. Then there is the parable of the servants being given talents to invest or grow the money that they are given, but one does not and is punished. Reading these, I feel my stomach flip. This is territory I don't like treading into. People are being cast out, and there is gnashing of teeth. Where is our compassionate God in all of this? Then we come to the story that we heard read today. It starts with a grand picture. I can hear the trumpets and the fanfare and see all those upturned faces expectantly waiting to hear what the Son of Man will say. Yet, as he starts to divide and judge the goats and the sheep, there is shock and possibly horror. I grew up listening to the music of Ken Medima, who has a beautiful way of telling stories in his songs. When I listen to this text today, I hear his setting of this passage. When both the sheep and the goats are given their judgment, 
they are truly astonished and surprised. Who, me? No. When did I do that? And I wonder how I would react. I have tried to be the good girl most of my life. Would I be devastated and ask why? How? When? Do we fear others judging us and ultimately the judgment of God? Are we longing to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant? Many in my generation and those younger than me shy away from judgment unless it's judgment of those who are being judgmental. We value tolerance, openness, and letting people believe what they deem is right. There are some of us that still need things to be black and white though, and there are still rights and wrongs. It's just that we may lean more towards John 3:17. A bit of, Jesus came not to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. As Mennonites, we have tried to be without spot or wrinkle, trying to live out our faith in ways that are pure. Yet earlier this year, many of us gathered to hear stories of how the Mennonites were complicit with Nazis. These stories hurt more because our forefathers and mothers tried to be in the world, but not of it. Yet even as they came to the USA to be able to enact their faith in freedom, they displaced indigenous peoples from their land stripping them from their land, their culture, their language, and ironically, their religious freedoms. Is there space for judgment here? We like to think that God is on, on our side, judging others. My cousin and I have been watching a number of dramas that are set in World War II. One of the things that hits me as we watch these is that both sides think that God is on their side. It seems easier to act when we think God will work for us and judge on our side. This seems true today in our day and age as well. And I wonder how we treat those on the other side from us. As much as the Matthew passage made me squirm, the Ezekiel passage drew me in. I honestly don't remember ever reading this particular passage before. Ezekiel was a prophet to the Judeans who had survived the fall of Jerusalem. He ministered to the few who found a way to continue as the people of Yahweh while in exile. The passage just before this one judges the false shepherds or bad leaders. The bad leaders of Israel and it's the words of condemnation that are very similar to what we heard in Matthew. The shepherds did not protect and care for their people. The verses before today's text say, Thus says the Lord God, I am against the shepherds, and I will rescue my sheep. In the passage that we heard today, these are words from a personal God. God who is the true shepherd. God is the sole source and agent of salvation. 
There is no appeal to the bad shepherds to change. It's too late for that. There is little reference to human activity at all. This passage is God-seeking, God-coming to care for God's sheep. We hear again and again the divine I, and at some points the double emphasis of I myself. It is God who will search, seek, rescue, bring out, feed, watch over the sheep, and then restrain those who might hurt the flock. God will judge and save. I will is said 18 times in these 11 verses. These are commitments that God is making. This is an active God. And what really hits me is that there is such love here. And then, bam, in verse 16, we hear also of God's justice. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the stray. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. This is not some kind of lovey-dovey. This is a strong and a powerful care. We are loved first, then comes God's justice. A few weeks ago in Kids Club, we had prayer stations set up all around the foyer and in the hall. At one of those stations, the kids were led to think about images of God and how they might see God. God is a rock. God is a mother hen. God is a strong tower. God is our refuge, and God is our joy. Who is the God that we see in this Matthew passage and then hear in Ezekiel? God as royal. God as the good shepherd. God as the just judge. I want you to think for a minute. What is the image of God that you connect with? What is the image of God that you really struggle with? And nobody panic, but I'm going to invite you to hold those images and to turn to the person next to you and tell them, what is the image of God that you hold and what is the image of God that you might struggle with? So just turn to somebody next to you. I'll call you back in a minute. Go. Okay, finish that thought. This is Christ the King Sunday. Is that an image of Jesus that we like? What does it mean for us to look beyond Jesus as teacher, model, and savior, and to give Jesus the space to be king, and to be the just judge that he is. Because 
we don't know what will happen when the final judgment will come. We are not the judges, and thus we don't get to decide other people's fate. We are not the judge. God is. Christ is. What we do know is that God seeks. God cares. God judges justly. And we are judged by the care that we show for the least and for the lost. I am normally surprised when I ask young people what it looks like to be a Christian. I often get a long list of don'ts. Christians don't swear, they don't sleep around, they don't drink or do drugs, and they don't dance. I'm losing there. And the, the positive thing that I normally hear about Christians is that they're nice to other people. But this Matthew passage says that our judgment rests not on our acts of wickedness, but on our failure to act compassionately when faced with human despair. It is what we don't do that may get us into trouble. The good shepherd God of Ezekiel cares for the lost sheep, and we need to join in with that work. We are called to accept God's care and then to extend it to others. This is the complexity of our God, care and judgment. Often after I hear a sermon, I want to go back and read the texts again, wanting to look at them after I've heard someone talk about them for a little while. In the same way that I really like Lectio Divina, where you can hear the text multiple times and new things stand out to you. In that way, the text are given space to speak for themselves. So I want you to hold on to that image of who God is for you as we listen to both the Matthew and the Ezekiel read for a second time this morning. So I invite Margaret to come up to read the Matthew, and then Thad and I will read the Ezekiel. I'd like to add one more thing. As I read this, think about how do you know when it's Jesus that you're facing? When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit in state on his throne with all the nations gathered before him. And he will separate the peoples into two groups as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, placing the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, you have my father's blessing. Come, enter, and possess the kingdom that has been ready for you since the world was made. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me into your home. When naked, you clothed me. When I was ill, you came to my help. And when in prison, you visited me. And then the righteous will reply, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and fed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? A stranger and took you home? or naked and clothed you? When did we see you ill or in prison and come to visit you? And the king will answer, I tell you this, anything you did for one of these, however humble, you did for me. Then the king will say to those on his left hand, the curse is upon you, go from my sight to the eternal fire that is ready for the devil and his angels. 
For when I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. When thirsty, nothing to drink. When I was a stranger, you gave me no home. When naked, you did not clothe me. When I was ill and in prison, you did not come to my side. And they too will reply, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger? When naked or ill or in prison and did nothing for you? And the king will answer, I tell you this, anything you did not do for one of these, however humble, you did not do for me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous will enter eternal life. And from Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out as the shepherd seeks their flock when they are among their scattered sheep. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountain of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture. And the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pastures on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down. Says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock. And they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> 